This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM. ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Yo, great friends, what's going on? It's Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7 milecasinocom Hey, um, I don't know about everybody else, okay? Uh, last night was the home run derby for the all-star festivities. And tonight is the all-star game and lots of Padres, lots of Dodgers sprinkle in a little bit of angels um, and all your favorite players. I don't know if everybody's going to be watching the all-star game tonight, like sitting down, watching it, like fully, you know, engaged in it. And I don't have any concept of how many people were really doing that last night for the home run derby. I know I was kind of most interested in the first round because I wanted to see that one, eight matchup where Browner told us that Albert Pujols was going to win. And oh, by the way, at least in the early round, Pujols did win. I was much more interested yesterday in all of the chatter around baseball about Juan Soto, who went on to win the home run derby, about where he's going to be traded. Yesterday, the conversation was Padres seem to be one of the leaders when it comes to trying to acquire Soto. But of course, everybody in baseball, especially all the big money spenders, they're the ones that are all involved in all this. And I can just tell you this, as much as Padre fans think that he's coming to San Diego, Dodger fans expect that he's coming to L.A. Um, And one of my ESPN L.A. colleagues yesterday said on the air, and I agree with it, I actually think it'd be bad for baseball if Juan Soto went to the Dodgers or the Yankees. I mean, just the richest of the rich keep getting richer. You know, Uh, the Padres, it's like, well, they're trying to catch up to Big Brother. They have not yet. Um, yesterday we were talking about if on paper the Padres had Juan Soto, does that put them in the class of the Dodgers? We put video out yesterday on social media and Dodger fans came running after us going, uh, you guys are out of your mind. So we're just getting going. All-star game is kind of top of mind. Let me say good afternoon to my guys. Here's Grande. Here's the brown man. Uh, Grande, were you sitting around all night last night intently watching the home run derby? Um, I watched every pitch of the home run derby, actually. It was a yeah, first year I've done that since I was a child, probably. Sad. I, I didn't have anything to do. Uh, so I, I sat there and I was on my phone and watching intently. And uh, it wasn't bad. It's was long. It's long. Lots of commercials, but it wasn't bad. It was good. Julio Rodriguez is uh, was very fun to watch. That kid, you know, we, saw, we just saw him here at Petco destroy the Padres. So we got a little taste of him early. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. I, 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 I liked it. Yeah, I um I will say Carl Ravitch is the um is the commentator now, right? He's like the lead announcer on it, you know. Got to be honest. Yeah. I watch it on ESPN Deportes. Oh, really? Watch it in yep. Spanish? So much more exciting, dude. Really? Like I like Carl Ravitch. I really do. He's been the voice of baseball on ESPN for my whole life. But boring for the home run derby. Not the vibe at all. He asked who Bad Bunny was. <laughs> come on man what'd you expect from him he's a 60 year old white guy would you think he he's gonna be that's down the, with bd and he's there's the only a problem BD. there's a he's problem a, with exactly. baseball right there like, exactly he's a 60 year old white man in an event that's literally supposed to be fireworks fun yeah. energetic yeah. that's it this is supposed to be care. about laughter and jokes yeah. and guys hanging out with their kids May, like yeah, i don't care about the white man there. part i don't care about the white man part i care about the 60 year old part I care about the no energy. I care about the calling it like it's a baseball yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Like he was calling it like it was a baseball game. Yeah. It's not a baseball game. Put it's Bill a Burr, derby. Put, put Bill Burr in there. Put Kevin Hart in there. Put somebody who will make, Dude, make light of Kevin stuff. Kevin Hart, what they did in the Olympics, do that. Yeah. What they like, do in the Olympics. Thought, Snoop they did, Snoop. Like, yeah, they were in a studio. Them two together were in a studio, and they just showed him clips of the funniest things or the coolest things or the most random things that happened during the Olympics, and they just commentated on it. It was hilarious. Like, no script, just them two. And I don't even I don't like listen. Kevin Hart. I, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think ESPN cares too much. I mean, but they really got to do something with the broadcast. Because I, I, you think Carl Ravage is going to be, like, pissed off if he gets taken off the home run derby broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't I don't know if he will because um, and I, I, I really don't know the answer, but I, I will say this, that for years, everybody kind of ridiculed and criticized. I think probably because people got bored of Chris Berman back, 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 back. He just hit that one to the Santa Monica Pier back, yeah. back, 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 back. That Man, one that went so far. Too. It's down to Orange County. Back, 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 back. That was he hit old, that right? one so far. <laughs> he went to San Diego. Back, 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 back. Mm-hmm. Did you see I much Chris prefer Ber- that. 
Did, did you see Chris Brown yeah. yesterday? Did you guys happen yes. to see him yesterday? Yes. So I only was, I was watching, I didn't see Berman. Was he part of the broadcast at all? Because I was watching the oh. preliminary warmups to the broadcast, you know, and they showed Chris Berman and I don't, dude, all I know is this. I mean, I know it was very hot out there yesterday. Okay. Everybody's I'm not saying, sweating. yeah, like everybody's sweating, but dude, Berman. Oh no. My, oh my God. This is so funny. You just brought this up. I had no idea that you had this. Berman is sitting there next to Jeff Passan and uh, Tim Kirkshin yeah. and, and Carl Ravage, I think, is to his right, although we don't see Carl in this picture that we're looking at. And yeah. Berman, poor guy. I mean, I love Chris Berman. I really honestly love Chris Berman. I always thought of him and associated him more with football than I did with baseball. But because of his exciting nature, you know, back, 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 back. He, he, that was funny. He shows up yesterday. We haven't seen Chris Berman. Actually, who is that to his right? I, I can't tell who that is. I don't is. know. Yeah, that was not Ravage. But we haven't seen Berman. At least I haven't. As is a that viewer Jeff of the Passan? No, Passan is to right. his left. We're looking at it. Passan is to the right. Kirkshin is to the right. I'm trying to figure out who is to Berman's left as we look at it. Berman's oh, right as he was standing there. I don't know who that is either. Yeah. But we haven't seen Berman, at least I haven't, as a, as a regular ESPN viewer. I haven't seen Chris Berman on TV in a really, really long time. And I know he's a big guy and I know he's, you know, he's a little older now. Um, doesn't look all that different, frankly, but man, oh man, poor guy yesterday was just sweating Soaked. like a mofo. And the thing is, is that when you're on TV and you're outdoors, it's very hard to hide. And when you're wearing a light blue shirt and you start to sweat and all of a sudden the light blue shirt turns dark blue. Uh, I kind of, I kind of felt bad for what I call the Godfather of ESPN, Chris Berman. I kind of felt bad for him yesterday. Like, dude, he, it, Ravage, Ravage had some uh, under boob sweat happening too. Yeah, I mean they had no shade. Ninety degrees in LA yesterday. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, like, <laughs> like it, it's gotten warm here uh, where I broadcast from in my house, and um, and I literally have a fan underneath nope, my nope, table. Don't, no, 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 it's true, dude. I have a fan underneath my table pointing up it's hitting my legs and my crotch right now it, it's coming right into my shorts the, i got the, a long the, fan to my right that hits my ankles to my head like a it's all it's on every day yeah brown you use a fan in your uh in your crib in your studio dog i survived doing this show from a shed sweating sweating profusely no i don't need a fan now i got space yeah. there's a breeze in here all right is it okay <laughs> can i ask you guys a question too is it that much of a fashion faux pas to wear an undershirt with a dress shirt on top because i that's I my go-to that is my go-to move like yeah. all these guys that are on television they know they're going to be on television mm -hmm. and they don't wear an undershirt so they got pit stains they got boob sweat they got neck sweat a simple thin white tee catches yeah. all of that I've never i don't not, understand i've, I've never like, not it's done my it. go-to move when i go to a wedding mm -hmm. and i see dudes that are wearing a white shirt and they're sweating their balls off on the dance floor yeah. and all of a sudden they're wearing a see-through shirt mm -hmm. i'm like is it that uncommon to put an undershirt on i never wear an undershirt ever what ever. i didn't know people didn't i always I, do I, I thought it was huh i go a, a white guy thing dude i really just thought it was a white guy thing that you guys just I don't do it no i don't do it i don't wear i don't wear an undershirt what? but but here's what i would say if i were gonna wear an undershirt if and it's not like I'm opposed to it, but here's what I would rather. If I were going to wear an undershirt, here's the thing. I want a white t-shirt and I'm going to yeah. get it in, in, for me, I want a v medium. Oh. I, I don't, what did you say? V-neck. Yeah, well, I do. I would prefer a V-neck hey, and v I would want it in, in a medium. And the reason is, is because I would want the undershirt to be super tightly, snugly fitting. Because the thing is, is that I hate anything to, to get an edge, huh? Well, I don't, I don't, I, I hate tucking in shirts in the beginning. The, the first, first things first, I hate to tuck in a shirt. Okay. But sometimes, Same. unfortunately, the occasion Business. calls for, yeah, I got to tuck in. I got to wear a belt. I got to look cleaned up, et cetera, et cetera. The reason I don't like to tuck in shirts is, is because mostly it makes me feel fat. You know, I feel very self-conscious. Like I'll, I'll look at, at myself and my profile in the mirror, I'm like, is my belly sticking out over my belt? And, and so first things first, tucking in a shirt makes me feel fatter than I really am. Makes me feel really self-conscious. Okay. 
And I've been to a lot of places, like a lot of weddings where, or bar mitzvahs or bat mitzvahs, where I'm always the guy when they bring the chair in the middle and everybody gets lifted up on the chair, I'm the ringleader of that. Mm -hmm. Because when you're the in the middle of that, you're in every picture forever. So I like to be that guy, okay? And when I'm done, I'm sweating like a mofo. I mean, I am just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like I just ran a marathon sweating. The undershirt is not going to help that, frankly. Now, where the undershirt... It will, though. Tell me more. Right. It will It will catch the stains. Mm -hmm. Oh, the pit stains. The, the pit stains. Mm -hmm. the, the under -boob. The, chest, the under boob, the chest, mm -hmm. the back. Anywhere you sweat. You literally got to be like showered in sweat for it to come through an undershirt. Mm. And even if it does come through an undershirt, it'll be like a dot or two. It won't be a full-on, you know, puddle of sweat under your Oil pit. spill. Yeah. I'm a big I'm gonna, firm believer, always have been, when I got to wear a dress shirt, even a black one, like I will throw on an undershirt because I don't, I don't want to be the dude with under boob and pit stains on. Mm -hmm. Like it just, I don't, I think it's a bad look more than an undershirt is a bad look. So then I've show us a not. picture, show us the picture again, if you don't mind, while Browner's talking, show us the picture of Chris Berman and, and tell me how an undershirt would have helped. Not saying that it wouldn't have. So just so you know. Because I'm going to do this. Next time I go to Costco, I know I got to go to Costco here soon. Costco has those like um, three pack T-shirts. They're usually, mm -hmm. I think, Calvin Klein branded, you know, and I'll I wear them just as regular T-shirts, black V-necks, white V-necks. If I were Chris Berman and I were in this picture right here, if I were wearing a white V-neck T-shirt because he's got his his he's buttoned all the way up to the top. Yeah. The only one that's not buttoned is the very, very top one, which you would only need buttoned if you were wearing a tie. If Berman were wearing a white V-neck undershirt with that blue shirt, you're saying we wouldn't see all of his sweat. He, he not as hide much it from us. Yeah, it I mean this man, bad. but this man was full shower sweat. You know, <laughs> like that's so that's going to be a tough thing to hide, regardless. But it's you're not going to see it like that. It's not going to look like a tie dye shirt. That's for sure. I mean, the guy spent 20 years in a studio. More is that amount of time in the sun for 20 minutes, and he sweats. I know, but but you look at look at guys like Kirchin and Passan. They you know they're little guys. They look, they look very like, little. They little. they well, I mean Berman's a big dude. I mean Berman is like 6'4", 260. And Kirchin's you know? three six, ninety. Yeah, right. And Passan <laughs> is like five nine, like one hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, you know he's a small guy, uh, but Berman's a big, heavy, older dude, like big, heavy breather. You know, mm -hmm. and um, man, I kind of also felt it's time for him to let that hair well, go at the top too. I felt for Chris Berman too, to be honest. Because first of all, he should, if he's there and, and he's, he's on ESPN, it. he should be right. calling it. Call the freaking thing. I don't know what ESPN's doing. I don't get it. But you like you, doing. you have these young Latin players for the majority. Obviously, you had Alonzo and and others that were not. But it's like a it. The home run derby always seems to be dominated, at least as far as the participants, by young Latin players. Because mm -hmm. that's who play the game. Right. So I know Alonzo's won the previous two up until yesterday, but you got to like match the vibe on the broadcast. Cause it just doesn't, you know, it well, just doesn't you could hear the announcer in the stadium's different. Yeah. You could hear the music, the DJ it's different, but the broadcast is the same. It's a Eduardo Perez and, and Carl Ravage. Yeah. And, and Eduardo <laughs> Perez as Hispanic as he may be, he's not exciting. And you know, to your At point, least he knew who bad bunny was. Well, that's nice. You I mean, just, I wouldn't know who Bad Bunny is. You need somebody with fire and flair and energy and style doing the home run derby, man. This is the one time you can peacock that thing from the booth to the plate, and they just mm -hmm. don't. They just yeah. don't. I don't understand it. Yeah. No, actually, I think it's fair criticism. Yeah. I, I do. I think ESPN it's good criticism. Deportes was, it, ESPN Deportes just brought more energy. They right. had a very they had they had professional broadcasters. Mm -hmm. They had dudes that call their Sunday night baseball on ESPN Deportes. They just happened to be matching the energy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's no, I think it's a good idea. I, I really do. I think it's a very good idea, and I will uh, run that through the ESPN channels that I have no access to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I you wasn't know, telling you, you to email somebody. It was, it was an observation. It's so funny. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you guys say this though, because I I um I got a message yesterday from one of my colleagues up in LA. And she said, hey, did you guys um, get your email? Because ESPN, you know, it, it's a very big company. And obviously, I don't have a lot of access to it, even though I'm an employee of it. I've never been to Bristol, Connecticut. I've never been on the campus. I, and frankly, I don't really know any of the executive team at all. 
Um, like my colleague Sedano up in LA, he lived in Bristol. He worked at the ESPN campus. He knows everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know anybody. So um, I yesterday I received a, a message from one of our people and she said, hey, did you guys check your ESPN email? And did you see what ESPN is saying to all of its employees? And I wrote back and I go, I don't even have an ESPN email. I literally do not have an ESPN email. In fact, they have a portal. You know how like big companies have a portal and you can log in and you can, you know, you can check your vacation days. You can yes. check your pay stubs. You can find out about company wide events. I barely can log into the portal. So yesterday, ESPN sent an email to all of its employees saying, hey, we, you know, working at ESPN is a big deal. You know, you probably grew up wanting to work at ESPN. Now you do. We want you to be proud of where you work. And they have a backpack, like a beautiful black backpack that says ESPN all over it. And they said, you know, all you have to do is click here, put in your name and address, and we'll send you one. But I don't have an ESPN email. So I, I, have I no guarantee you. I bet you do. Knowing you, I yeah. guarantee you do. I bet you do. Yeah. You just oh, never no. set it up. A hundred percent. Absolutely guaranteed. I'm sure that somewhere in the system, I have an ESPN email. It's just that no one ever told me what to do or how to set it up. And I have no idea how to get a hold of anybody in HR for any help. But somebody forwarded me the email yesterday and I filled it all out. Hey, it's me. Here's my address. Send me the backpack. I don't even know why I want it. I just feel like, it's you know, it's free. Right. That, pretty much. That's why. That's kind of yeah. actually why. Because it's, it's free and, and it's available. And that's why yeah. I wanted it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Kaplan Child. Who is looking in here? Hi, Jillian. Oh, oh. I just love how working from home means kids come in while I'm on the air, dog walks in, does whatever he wants to do. Do you think that there would be less interruptions if there was a door as opposed to a curtain? A curtain doesn't really do any, you know, doesn't hold well, me back. Right. Well, here's the thing is when I moved, um, I used to have a door, but now I didn't have any doors. And so the, when I first got here, I was trying to angle it so you couldn't see what was behind me. And then my thought process was, I'm not going to put doors on on here. I'll just put up these curtains. And uh, yeah, it allows everybody to just kind of walk in and do whatever they want while we're on the air. Curtains a lot quieter than doors. Also, at least when they come in, it'll be quiet. That's kind of true. That is kind of true. Because hey, they're going to come in if there's a door or not. Right. So this whole conversation started with the Home Run Derby. It turned into getting sweaty which turned into, do you wear an undershirt or do you not wear an undershirt? If you don't wear an undershirt, I don't understand you. Yeah, for dress shirts, yeah. I don't understand you. Yeah. You know what I don't understand? And I see guys doing this still to this day. Guys who wear wife beater tank tops underneath dress shirts. What does that do for you? Those guys don't wear condoms. Don't trust them. <laughs> don't trust them at all. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, wait, guys. Where does that go? Yeah, guys who what wear white beater tank us? tops. You you say across the board generality, those guys don't use 100%, condoms. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's the dumbest look you could ever possibly do. Where's the protection, bro? What what are we doing? So you you all this cut out all the danger zone of sweating, right? <laughs> the danger zone is in here and under here. It's wait. cut out. How is that helping you? You're saying maybe the it's neck more area of like a, and the pit. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe they don't do you? it for sweat protection. Maybe they do it for like what Scott was saying. They want it tight as possible. Maybe it's more of a sports bra. Is that Whoa. is that what maybe. a is that what a white tank top is like Whoa. underneath a dress shirt is more of a compression y sports bra cover, hold it all together down, kind of thing? Push down the under boob. Mm -mm. I see this this ad on Instagram for um guys wearing like a pair of underwear that you pull up really to your chest, you know? Oh, I saw and, that. And, <laughs> and, and, and male it's Spanx? Like, yeah, and it's male Spanx. Dude. <laughs> and I'm like, and here's me. Hey, I could use that product. Oh, man. Do some sit up. But if I color. use Come that on, product, man. I'm just going to keep getting fatter and fatter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because man. I'm going to keep cheating with the male Spanx. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, have Jeff, have you guys ever up. got, I doubt Browner's ever got this ad, but have you ever got the ad of, uh, the tease specifically for guys with man boobs. Oh yeah. Like supposedly like it, it eliminates the man boob. If right. you wear this tee and I was like, yeah. how does that work? Dude? Right. They're like, check like out this t-shirt, bro. Right. They're like, check out this t-shirt. <laughs> See the way it's cut. It's like your yeah. man boobs are showing off. But if you wear this t-shirt, it makes you look yeah. built and it's like, yeah. okay, so I don't have to work out. Buff. I, I just yeah. got to get the right t-shirt. Yeah. You, you got to right wear cut. a 
it, a t-shirt will cover your man boobs guys yeah. guys we're still men come on yeah. fellas I know, come right? on I know. all what right listen let, let me do this we started with the all-star game stop we'll wearing wife beaters under our jerk our, our shirts please we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the all-star game because we'll, we'll, i think the bigger story than the home run derby which we'll get to is really that everybody thinks they're getting Juan Soto. That in the next two weeks before the baseball trade deadline, everybody thinks they're getting him. The Yankees, the Mets, the Padres, the Dodgers, everybody thinks they're getting Juan Soto. Hey, before we hit this break, I do want to remind everybody, this upcoming Saturday, we have an IV lounge at iThrive MD. Here's the phone number if you want to make an appointment. 858-240-1497. 858-240-1497. I got a call yesterday from uh, Ron, who's the owner of the Kranken, he goes, dude, I'm hearing you guys talking about us on the radio. Wednesday night is the Crank It with Bill Hagen. Thursday night is the Great Friend Stables kickoff party for Del Mar. Friday is the Del Mar opening day. And Friday night is the Rancho Valencia after party. I will meet you at iThrive on Saturday between 12 and noon. You get a 30% discount. And by that time, I will need the iThrive and the IV. We're having an IV lounge on Saturday. Join us. 858-240-1497. We'll see you there. Let's get to the All-Star Game next on Kaplan and Crew. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio and your view featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew. Every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier 1090.com. Please welcome in tax attorney Adam Brewer. Adam, thanks so much for joining us again on Main Street Living. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be back. So of course we have more tax questions for you. First of all, what are the types of business entities that business owners can use? Yeah, I had a feeling you'd ask this question. <laughs> so this time of year, this is when you know business owners probably just got uh, handed a pretty pretty big tax bill, um, and so naturally the next question is, you know, how can they save taxes? Uh, how can they save on taxes? And so that's where these business entities really uh, they they may come in. So. Um, so yeah, what we're looking at is corporations or limited liability companies, you know, more commonly called LLCs. So, um, so definitely by using either a, a corporation or an LLC, business owners may be able to really save on, on taxes. For the most part, when we talk about tax savings, we're looking at like an S corp election. And so again, an LLC can do that. A corporation can do that. Um, but the net result is you want to save on what's called self-employment tax. So for 2022, uh, a business owner is going to, by default, pay self-employment tax on the first $147,000 of, ta of taxable income. So that's 15.3%. Um, by doing an S-Corp election, putting yourself on payroll, uh, you can really drive down how much of your income you have to pay that 15.3% at. Beyond the tax savings, um, it just offers an extra level of protection between the business owner's personal assets, say their home, and their business operation. So, uh, you know, no matter what business you operate, you're going to have some some exposure to to liability. So, an entity like a corporation, like an LLC, it just puts that extra level of protection between between the business and then what the owner has. Uh, on their personal side. Yeah, well, clearly a plethora of information that you always provide to us, Adam. We appreciate you being on the show. Where can our viewers get in touch with you for more tax help? Yeah, like always, they can visit my website, triumphovertax.com, or feel free to pick up the phone. You can always give me a call, 619-591-9500. Uh, The 2022 San Diego Loyal season continues live on your view and yourview.com. Watch the San Diego Loyal host the Rio Grande Valley FC Toros Saturday, July 23rd at 7 p.m. Come join us at Torero Stadium and support the San Diego Loyal as they continue their bid for the 2022 USL Championship. Tickets are available. San Diego Loyal versus the Rio Grande Valley FC Toros Saturday, July 23rd on your view. 
Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And yes, Seven Mile Casino is only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar over here. Uh, the slider burgers are out of control. The Kung Pao chicken is the best in San Diego, and it's not even a Chinese restaurant. The pizzas are great. Alex, I know you love the salads and those duck tacos. Mm -hmm. Browner, I know you love the wings. It's a great restaurant. And right next door, I mean, in the same building is Seven Mile Casino. And you got blackjack and poker and table games, and people are winning, and they're having a great time. I just want to encourage everybody, though, if you have any issues of any kind, you can call 1-800-GAMBLER. But I'll see you down there at Seven Mile Casino. And I wish everybody good luck. Now, at the commercial break, Alex said to us, and I have no idea what he's about to tell us, that he's got a, a pay that man update. So on one hand, he might be talking about T-shirt sales on KaplanandCrew.com. And on the other hand, because we heard about this yesterday, that the Padres and Joe Musgrove, there seems to be some movement in this uh, contract negotiation that either might get done or might have to just wait, might have to be shelved for the second half of the season. So, Grande, what is the pay that man update you were going to tell us about? It looks like we have a number in mind now. Looks like we have an oh, annual boy. number in mind now. When we're now, headed... where is this? Where is this coming from? I'm just curious. So that it, so it, can, it's going to be so in my range. Guess. It's going to be yeah, in my so range. I, I think it's going to be in all of our range, Brown. But I'm just curious where this information is coming from, so that we we can take an educated. This is today's guess. article from Kevin AC titled. Padres Joe Musgrove feeling like the all-star he is. Mm -hmm. That's a long title. Okay. Um, he goes into like kind of a story of, of how he has gotten to the Padres and how good he's been since he was with the Padres. And if you guys saw in your content today, actually, this is where I got it from. This is how good he's been since getting to the Padres. And if you go to 2020, he's been so three straight years of being a top 10 pitcher in all of baseball. So in this, can you kind of put that up. Can you put that up while you're talking for those that are, are watching on YouTube or watching on TV? Uh, we can actually just take a quick look at this while you're, uh, while you're commenting on it. All-star Joe, since joining the Padres, his record is 19 and 11. His ERA is 2.90 and seventh in what? And in, in the, in the past two seasons, that's the seventh best ERA in all of baseball. Okay. 305 strikeouts, 12th best in all of baseball and a whip. Whip of 2.90. Whip Correct. it good. Correct. So this was kind of just a quick little line in this long article, but I'll just read it to you and I'll stop when I get to the number and then you guys could guess. Okay. After being a part of the 17 Astros World Series team, he was traded to Pittsburgh. He further there, he further refined his six pitch arsenal. He grew into a solidly dependable starter and the Padres acquired him in January of 21 to be their third starter. They had, heard, they had heard good things about his makeup, but they didn't know how much he had invested in physical and mental training and how that would pay off. It has reached a point where the team and Musgrove are close enough to agreeing on a multi-year contract that multiple sources said the deal, which would guarantee Musgrove upwards of blank a year. Okay. All right, Brown, you want to take the first shot here at the number? Six, 16. 16. Um, if this were a game, I would say 16 and one, meaning like I would go over <laughs> my number is going to be, my number is going to be 18. Yeah. My number has been 18. My number has been match Barrios's contract the whole time, mm -hmm. which is about mm -hmm. 18.3. Okay. So according to AC, it's reached a point where Musgrove is close enough to agreeing on a multi-year contract that multiple sources said the deal, which would guarantee Musgrove upwards of $18 million a year. Yeah. It I had could read get that. done this week. Mm -hmm. um, Musgrove does not want to wait till the end of the season, but will if it doesn't come to fruition in the next couple of days. Yeah, he should. He should do that. I mean, take that, bro. Yeah. It, listen. He, well, he should do. He should do both things. If first, if there is a deal for Joe Musgrove to get paid on average of eighteen million dollars a year a year, he should jump on that. That's number one. Yes, immediately. Right. If number two there is no chance to get a deal done because let's just say the number comes in, let's just use less than 18 million per year. Mm -hmm. Then Musgrove should wait. 
So, so if the numbers come in to average 18 million, Musgrove would be smart to jump on that. If the numbers come in less than 18 million, and I'm not talking 17 million, 999,000. I'm just talking about if the numbers come in <laughs> less than, you know, 18 million, he should then commit himself to, I'll wait, screw it. I will wait. I will go to the free agent market. I will take my statistics from the Padres for the last few years, regardless of what happens in the second half of the season. And I will go find myself money somewhere else. Because here's the thing. The one thing about Joe Musgrove is this. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to come at this from Peter Seidler's perspective. Okay. I'm the owner of the team. I got a lot of money wrapped up in Manny. I got a lot of money wrapped up in Tatis. And I haven't really gotten what I've invested in Tatis yet. I might, but it's a risk, a big risk. But the reward could be high as well. Right now, um, high risk, low reward. Because Tatis hasn't really played at all. Well, I mean, has not played at all this year. But if he comes back and he's who he's been, you'll get your money out of the guy. For, again, I'm Peter Seidler now and I'm thinking this thing out. If we're really serious about getting Juan Soto, then we have to be prepared not just to have him for the next two and a half years, but what is the future? Is there a way to keep this group potentially Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, and Soto if you get Soto? Which, by the way, I'll call a quick timeout on this, this rant. Today on ESPN, this is earlier today, they put up a graphic on which show? Sports, Sports Center? Center. First thing is yeah, oh, okay. Center. On Sports Center earlier today, they put up a graphic of what your team might look like if you got Juan Soto in your order, uh, in your lineup. And I got news for you that as much as yesterday, everybody was talking about how the Padres are leaders in potentially acquiring Juan Soto, a lot of other teams are, are in on this as well. So here's the graphic that was on television earlier today on Sports Center. I happen to take this picture off my television. If the Padres got Soto, they'd have Tatis, Soto, and Machado. Pretty good, huh? Mm-hmm. If the, Clearly. if the Cardinals got him, they'd have Paul Goldschmidt, Soto, and Nolan Arenado. Also damn good. Mm -hmm. If the Yankees got him, oh, my God. Aaron Judge, oh, Juan boy. Soto, and Giancarlo Stanton. Oh, boy. And this That's, is this like 150, that seem fair. 150 home runs right there. That doesn't seem fair, man. <laughs> right. But wait, I, I only think it's worse for the Dodgers. And when I say worse, what I mean is of all four teams that are on the, ca are on the screen, for those of you listening on radio, Padres have three guys. Cardinals have three guys. Yankees have three guys. Dodgers, though, have four names. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner, and now Juan Soto. Here's the Should difference with the Dodgers. Juan Soto go. Yeah. That's this year. Mm -hmm. Trey Turner's a free agent. Everybody else, all three other teams, it's our long-term contracts for all three other teams. Yeah. As I look at that, and I'm just sheer, oh, God, the Yankees did it for me. The Yankees make me go, oh, God, no, 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 no. Don't let them do that. <laughs> Don't let them do that. Because the Yankees no. are already the best team in baseball. Out of nowhere, right. they just became the best team in baseball. And, you know, they got a young, good pitching staff. They've just invested a ton of money in Garrett Cole. They got Nestor Cortez. Like, they got – the Yankees are going to be a problem without Juan Soto. Right. You throw Juan Soto in there. Right. Like, see, that's the difference with the Padres is I don't think the Padres are a problem without Juan Soto. I think they're a playoff team, maybe. All these other teams, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, like that's a problem for everybody else in the league. You can't let that. So it's almost like see, last no, year. No, no, it's uh -uh. almost like last I, I, year we were talking about with Scherzer. It's not just that you get Scherzer, it's that they don't get Scherzer. I think the see, I don't I don't believe in the Cardinals at the same rate that you do. I'm not spooked just by traditionally, them. Traditionally, just they're just always well, there. yeah, and they, they've always been a good baseball franchise. They always spend their spend their money in the smart places, they make right, they make the right deal. I would the only the only two teams that I see that and I go, don't let that happen are the Yankees, which by far and away, and then the Dodgers, because the Dodgers have so many good players. Adding this guy to the team would kind of just be like the Warriors adding KD. It's like, all right, well, but I wonder if you're if the rest you're the, of us is gonna play to the end of the year. But I wonder if you're the Nationals. Because you know, we talked about what the Padres have to give up, which is like everybody, all their prospects. Mm -hmm. Dude, if you're the Nationals, the like what are they too. gonna what do the Dodgers got to give up? The Dodgers are packed with talent. Like the, Do right. the, do the Dodgers, do they, you know, like obviously people are like, Oh, you just trade to T straight up or something like that. 
like what are the Dodgers like? Who do they trade? Who like because you got to give a lot up to get Soto, whoever you are. Our friend Chris Rose said that they would have to trade Tatis and some more for Juan Soto, and at and and again, Chris Rose knows more baseball about than me. But that's dumb. That's foolish. No thanks. Well, I don't. I think the whole point when of he that, comes on this show next time, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him to his face. Well, after Musgrove listen, gets paid. Yeah, right. Um, if you go back to that graphic, though, the whole key to all of this is, is that anybody who wants to trade for Juan Soto, they're adding to what they already have. They're not deleting one of their stars. The Padres would want Soto in between Tatis and Machado. The Cardinals would want Soto between Goldschmidt and Arenado. The Yankees would want him between Judge and Stanton. And the Dodgers would want him to be part of a foursome that would include Betts, Freeman, and Trey Turner. So, listen, it is conceivable that the Washington Nationals, who last year traded Scherzer and Trey Turner to the Dodgers and got a lot of the Dodgers' top prospects in return. I say a lot. I mean, I'd have to go back and really analyze what they did. But I do recall at the time, there was one player in particular that the Dodgers had who was like their number one prospect. He was a pitcher that had just come up to the major leagues, and he was part of that deal. If you are the Nationals, you might be looking at the Dodgers' farm system, and you might be saying, there's more I want from the Dodgers than the Padres have or would be willing to give. And I, I just wonder if the Dodgers – pull this thing off. I think that there's well, also reports Soto, that, sorry, real quick. I think there's a lot of reports that saying that the nationals are very much interested in not just prospects, but like major league ready prospects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like triple a dudes guys, mm -hmm. like maybe someone like CJ Abrams. That's already been up here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like guys that, so you could be looking at Gavin Lux, maybe Gavin Lux gets thrown in there. Gavin Lux is an incredible young prospect for the Dodgers. Like you could be depleting some stuff from the major league roster this year. I would I would argue if I'm the Padres for Juan Soto, if I get to keep my my major league lineup intact, I'll give you whoever we got on the farm system. I can get more of those. And and by the way, a lot of those guys missed. So take them. Take them. Well, I think keep that's why team. that's why Washington would say, hey, we got to have more. We got to have major league ball players. I mean, in theory. And, and, yeah. 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 And, and again, CJ Abrams, I love you, brother. I'll help you pack. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of there's, the the Padres have always had a highly rated farm system. Not and always. Some of those, no. Well, for the last three to four years, they have they have been rated higher because with Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams, they've got guys that are playing at the major league level. C.J. Abrams is starting to come around. Obviously, Mackenzie Gore seems to have hit a snag here, but they have guys who you can turn to the Nationals and say, here's major league tape on these guys. I look at prospects so, the way I look at draft picks. You want who cares? You want those prospects and those draft picks to turn into Juan Soto. Yes, real player. So if, right. like, if you're like throwing in Robert Hassel, who's a top prospect for the Padres as an outfielder, you're like, yeah, it'd be a dream cool. if he turns into Juan Soto, but I can go get Juan Soto now and I already got that guy. Well, think about this. Right. I mean, who do the Padres have right now that is homegrown, drafted, cultivated, and brought to the major league level. Mackenzie Gore, which is CJ you know, who is and, and CJ Abrams, these two guys. Um, otherwise, I'm just thinking, you know, in my head right now, I mean, Hosmer was not a homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. Cronenworth was a throw in in a trade. Tatis was traded for, but he wasn't even, as I recall, the primary portion of the trade because um, he was just a kid at the time yeah. and a prospect. So it's not like the Padres drafted him and found him scouted him and cultivated him and, and got him to the big leagues and manny had nothing to do with the padres coming yeah. up through Profars his far through his career so far no grisham no myers no mazara no i mean as a car as Zokar, um but no nobody i mean there's there's literally not a guy i mean there's two names mackenzie gore and cj abrams there's two guys on the padres roster right now unofficially top of my head uh just reacting to this potential news um, there's two guys on the Padres that have come through the Padres system and have made it to the big leagues. How many guys on so, the Dodgers? Like Will Smith? Gavin yeah, Lux? I would have to really start I thinking think about those... that because Justin Turner didn't. Trey Turner didn't. Mookie Betts didn't. Right. Um, Freeman didn't. But great well, baseball teams not. traditionally may have one or two. They don't have five or six.
Like, and that's the thing. That's why I don't mind trading well, farm system players that's what I'm because saying. they never turn into anything. Well, that, that's what Who I'm cares? saying. If I were the Padres, I'd look at the percentages. They say, well, what is the percentage of guys in our farm yes. system that become A, major league players, or B, stars? And the answer is like 5% and 0% thus far. Right. So, and by the way, if one of them becomes Juan Soto, guess what? You got Juan Soto anyway. Yeah. I, um, I Listen, I, I will say this right now, just based on the history alone. I'm skeptical that the Padres will get him. Yeah. I would say of the four teams we put up on the screen and we didn't build the graphic, but ESPN did. I would say that the teams most likely to get Soto are who you would guess they are. The Yankees and the Dodgers. Don't forget about the Mets now. I, the Mets I should are put back. the Mets in there. The Mets I, are back should... with their new owner. Like they're spending money as much He's as a spender. So they just gave Max Scherzer like 50 million a year. So yeah. Like, and they're good. Yeah. They're right there. I, I, I know the uh, the Mets, when the, when the second half of the season starts and the Padres' first series, I believe, is in New York against the Mets at City Field. Does that sound right to you? I haven't, uh, the only reason I'm mentioning yeah. it is because my daughter told me uh, she and my other daughter and my ex are going to New York for uh, like, I don't know, a week or 10 days, and they're going to see a Yankee game. And then all of a sudden they found out that the Padres were playing the Mets, so now they're going to see the Padres-Mets. And my daughter's like, I'm wearing my Tatis jersey. <laughs> I'm rocking that. Yeah, they play Friday. All right, well. But it, the Padres he, have traded away some good players that were prospects of theirs. Like, Ty France mm -hmm. is an all-star. They just traded him. Um, Manny Margot, he's good. Hunter Renfro, he's good. I mean, everybody on Cleveland that we got for Mike Levinger. <laughs> you know, like, so the Padres have traded away, like, major league starters and all-stars. So it's not that the Padres don't have guys that can turn into them. But I don't think that's the point. I don't think any of them, as good as Ty France has been since he left here and went to Seattle, I don't think he's anywhere near a Juan Soto. No, but I right. think the other part of it is, I think we started getting into this yesterday, is if you are A.J. Preller, we perceive him to be in a position where if the Padres, let, let's say the Padres don't Blame get out. Juan Soto. Let, let's say the Padres don't get Juan Soto. And let's just say, let's just play this out for a second. Let's say the Padres don't get Soto, and let's say they don't make the playoffs. My perception is, this is not based in fact. Nobody's said, hey, this is the threshold. It's either this or you get fired. But my perception is, is that management would start to say, you know what? We've given you a long time, and we haven't seen the end result. You know, And a lot of rope. Right. We, we've, given, also, we've, we've spent more money than ever before, and we've just not gotten mm -hmm. the results. So you know what? Maybe it's time to freshen up the front office. And if the Dodgers were to get Soto, I mean, listen, they're running away with oh, the division right now. If the Padres get man. Juan Soto and if the Padres get Fernando Tatis back, could they possibly make it competitive? Close the gap well, a little bit. Maybe. I think if you get if you get both of the, if you are if you can keep all guys intact and you just basically give them whatever they want from the farm system. If you can do that, now you have firepower going into the playoffs. So I don't think you're going to catch them in a division. They're way too far ahead. They would have to have a mini collapse or an actual collapse for you to catch them. So, But now, when you get them in a playoff series, you have firepower. You have answers to what they have. Right now, unless the tease comes back and he's out of his mind, you don't really have enough firepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, bat-to-bat -bat with them. Pitching-wise, I think you do, but bat-wise, you just don't. So if you get Juan Soto in that lineup with with uh with Manny, with with uh Tatis, with Cronenworth, it, you'll find some guys who get a hit here and there. You have a chance. You well, have yeah, a chance. You, a, you a go legit from having, fighting chance. Yeah, you go from having three guys in your lineup to having a legit four guys in your lineup. Who, That's what you really yes. have. Also with the Preller thing, who takes blame mm -hmm. for Tatis? Who Tatis. takes blame for Tatis? What? Is it strictly one hundred percent on Tatis, or does Peter Seiler be like Yes? AJ, can you get control of this kid? Like, isn't that part of his job? No. No. Okay. I was just no. asking. No. No. no I, I no. just listen. I, if I were Peter, Seidler, but if you miss the playoffs again and you collapse again, are you not because point blame for everything on fired. anybody? Yeah, but you're I. Fired. But if I'm Peter Seidler, honestly, like as as the owner of the team and as the employer of the player, I don't care how powerful the player thinks he is. If I'm Peter Seidler, I'm. I would have had a conversation by now, and I'm sure he probably has. I'm just taking a guess, where he brings Tatis into his office and goes, "Hey, man, look." Um, you're a star. We get it. And we're really happy to have you. And obviously we made a long-term commitment to you. What we expect in return though, is a commitment to us. We committed to you long-term more money than we've ever spent ever. 
Okay. I had to go out and call all my investors. This is true. I had to go out and call all my investors for a capital call. I mean, do you guys understand that? Like people who have money in Padres ownership, I own 2%. I own 4%. I own 6%. You know, those people were all solicited. Hey guys, we need more money. And every well, you your choice was either you, your choice is either you put in more money or you get diluted. So all I'm saying is, is that if I were, if I were Seidler, I would try and explain business to a young kid. We put a lot of money into you. We made a long-term commitment. We expect maturity and a commitment back to us. So anyway, all right, listen, we'll keep going. I, we we want to hear some of what Manny Machado said at the all-star festivities. We want to hear what Juan Soto was talking about. We want to talk a little bit more about the home run derby. And uh, we got a lot of stuff we want to get to. So you know, I think we're, we're very sportsy today on a Tuesday, even though we were talking about sweating and undershirts earlier today. Hey, before we hit this break, quick mention of our friends at Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of Escondido.com. Alan, the general manager at Mazda of Escondido, asked me to tell you guys he needs your used cars. They're worth more than ever before. If you want to trade them in on a new Mazda product, great. You're going to get more for your used car than ever before. But if you just want Alan and his team to analyze your used car and make you a cash offer on the spot, they're doing it. They are doing it. You could walk out with cash money. Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of Escondido.com. They want, they need your used cars. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. More on the second half and the All-Star Game coming right back. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. The Rich Eisen Show airs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. An engaging blend of insightful football expertise with an offbeat mix of humor and pop culture while continuing to attract the most recognizable names in sports and entertainment. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. okay. I had a degree and work experience. I should be able to provide for my kids, but they're just things that you don't plan on in life. My husband got laid off and we are a family of five. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I would ask the doctors, what can I do? And they would just say, just make sure she's eating. Our life just changed completely. Thank God that we always had a, a plate of food.
I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Listen to The Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Here's Kaplan accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. It's time for some San Diego Loyal Soccer Club updates. The Loyal got the win against the Colorado Springs Switchbacks on Monday night. Thomas Amang got the scoring started in the 18th minute off an assist from Jack Blake. Tumi Moshebane scored his fifth goal of the season shortly after, and Blake had a goal of his own in the 67th minute to seal the deal. The win moved San Diego to within two points of Colorado Springs in the Western Conference standings. The Loyal sit at third with 37 points, Colorado Springs at second with 39 points, and San Antonio FC is in first with 43 points. Next up for the Loyal, they'll take on Rio Grande Valley FC on Saturday. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan accrued tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. What's going on to all the great friends that watch the show on television here on Cox Your View? What you're about to see will never be heard on radio, won't be seen on YouTube, no audio podcast. This is just for you here on Cox Your View. Want to say to all the great friends who are watching on Cox Cable, part of the Cox Your View Network in San Diego Channel 4, in Santa Barbara Channel 4, in LA and Orange County Channel 118 on Cox or Spectrum. But then again, you know that because you're watching. Um, this is Cox exclusive content with Kaplan and crew. You'll never hear this on, ra on radio. You'll never see this on YouTube. You won't hear it on audio podcast. This is just for you guys that are watching on TV. Grande Brown Man, Wednesday night this week. So today is Monday. It is July 18th. Uh, but on Wednesday, July 20th, Keg the Band is playing at the Kraken in Cardiff. And who is the leader of Keg the Band? our very own Bill Hagen, who owns 1090, who got us on to Cox Your View. And we want to get everybody out there on Wednesday night. I know it's a school night, everybody, but come on out because Wednesday night, the place is going to go off and we're going to have a great time. And Bill Hagen is here right now. Bill, good afternoon. Hey, how are you? Thank doing, you. Doing great, man. Hey, uh, tell us if you can, we've got about five minutes here. Tell us about the band, what kind of music you guys play and, uh, and what you're hoping for come Wednesday night. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I've always played music. I've been in bands when I was in high school and college and hadn't been in a band in about uh, 20 years. And a good friend of mine, Jim O'Connell, and I, about four years ago, started playing guitar. And it just started off as kind of a joke, to be honest with you. And you know, so we call it, you know, world's or uh, North County's hottest dad band because we're all in our 50s and we all have, you know, uh, kids and, and all that. So we started playing and surely, you know, uh, this is almost four years ago. Uh, we played our first gig like three years ago at the Moose Lodge and we started playing and getting kind of a following and, you know, always kind of a tongue in cheek thing that, you know, this was a, you know, North County's hottest dad band. It was kind of a joke, uh, but it's turned out to be a pretty cool thing. We had, uh, you know, we get, we get a couple hundred people that show up and we get the same, uh, same group of people. We have a, a great following up here in Carlsbad and Oceanside that people come and see us wherever we play. Uh, the Kraken's a big deal. We've never played at the Kraken before. Uh, so we're very, very excited about it. Should be, should be very cool. Can I ask you, you so you've been in bands your whole life. Are you yeah. the lead singer of this band? I, you... play, I play rhythm guitar. I'm, I'm, I, I am the, I have the fortunate of being the least talented person in, in the band, <laughs> which is always what you want. You want to be the least talented person. So I, I play rhythm guitar, uh, do a little backup, uh, background vocals. Matt Gar is our lead singer and he's legitimately a really good singer. Uh, we've got Eric uh, on bass and Doug on drums, uh, all really good guys, all been in bands, you know, in high school and college and all that. Uh, we've got a really good, you know, good five group uh, guys. They're, they're really 
cool to hang out with and, and just good people. God, I'm so jealous, man. I, I don't play guitar. I've always wanted to play guitar. I've never had the patience to really, truly learn. Plus, of course, I think I'm a lead singer, but I've never really lead sung. Mm. Uh, but I, mm. what's up, Brown? Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, not, let's not say you're a lead singer, please. Well, I'm saying in my own mind, I'm a lead singer is what I'm getting at. Okay. Who so else is Bill, in the group? In your mind, who else is in the group? Well, I need a hype man. Would you would you hype me up? Oh yeah, I could do that. I could do that. I got you. <laughs> Bill, I'm really excited though about Wednesday. Do night. dad bands have hype men? I don't know. I thought that was like pretty pretty band. I mean, dad bands can have whatever you want. I, mean, I feel like it's oak. pretty <laughs> exclusive to rap at the moment. Check this out. I can be the nephew and the dad band. I'm the nephew. There you go. All well, right. You guys are all gonna be there, right? And I have yeah. uh, in fact, mm -hmm. I mean, literally going out in you know the nice little gold gold uh, packages that we have we've got some keg shirts here we got can we, can we see those because uh, did i because I, I understand bill that the first 50 people yes that come into the kraken all get these these shirts so it says on the back keg the band out of carlsbad it's got the 1090 logo the kaplan and crew logo our partners at 91x their logo yep. as well so the first 50 people that come into the kraken they will get those those t-shirts what time does the band go on eight o'clock we're playing three sets uh eight to 11. So we're going to go on Ooh. right straight up at eight. Um, I expect uh, a full house. I mean, you know, Kraken is such a, a unique place and it doesn't take a lot to fill up that place really. Right. But um, I will just say this, that it's the kind of place where believe it or not, local musicians really want to get onto that stage. Yes. And the better the band performs, meaning the more people that come, the more people that drink, the more people that have a good time behave, um, the better it is for the band to get booked there another time. So, for me, um, I know you guys love the Moose Lodge. I do too. I like the VFW and Encinitas when bands play there. But the Kraken is my hometown, I'm going to call it dive bar, music bar, uh, for, for local small venue types of shows. And I just want everybody who's watching on Cox right now to make your plans. It's Wednesday night, July 20th. You might be watching this on Wednesday, July 20th at 7.15 at night, 7.20 at night. Get your ass in your car. Show starts at 8. Show's going to run to 11, 11 and right. we're all going to be there. Yeah. Now, me and Brown are committed. I got yeah. 30 seconds. Alex, are you going to come or are you not going to come? No, come I will on. be there, yeah. but I won't be there till 11. Guaranteed. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a dad That's yet, fair. but That's I have fair. a dad <laughs> bedtime, dude. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I appreciate right. you guys just doing this. This is very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. First 50 people that get to the Kraken on Wednesday night, you're going to get those, those keg the band t-shirts. And uh, again, everybody watching on Cox, I know that we have this great relationship, you know, but this is this is just you guys finding out about this. Come to the Kraken in Cardiff Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. I know it's a school night. We'll see you guys all there. Let's get back to the show. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. See you. Peace. Locally owned and operated, not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie cutter radio station crap. We simply say to those stations, you the mightier 1090 espn radio socal sports talk i'm tax attorney adam brewer if you have a serious tax problem with the irs or state of california then you don't need a tax relief company you need a tax attorney call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation what keeps me coming back is um it's just learning more about myself in the classroom and, uh, and as I learn more about myself, I can share more about myself with my students. And I can open up more and, and, uh, and care more and love more and, uh, and teach more by example. Teaching is just one of those things that if you have a heart for it, you found your place. And I have found my place. Uh, I get to help little people realize what it means to learn something for the first time. And that's something like reading that will be with them for the rest of their lives still a little bit uh, overwhelmed, uh, maybe a little bit surprised. You know, you don't go into teaching for awards, you go into teaching because you sincerely believe you can make a difference in young people's lives and, and that's kind of what got me into the field in the first place. We use our phones to order our food, catch a ride, share our stories, and so much more. SDCCU made banking from your mobile device easy too. You can do so much, get up-to-date account balances, 
check on pending deposits, transfer money, deposit checks, and more. Safely and securely all through the convenience of your smartphone. SDCCU. It's not big bank banking. It's better. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific. Every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM. ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk.